Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful website where you can start your own business online. Welcome to another vlog. I wanted to come on camera because it's actually been a while since I vlogged. This past week, I haven't been feeling like my best self, but I do feel better now, so I feel like I can talk to you about it. But before we swoop into the mental health corner, let me just tell you a little bit about some nice little happy things that have been going on in my life. I'm currently working on this new collaboration for designing a tote bag and this is the design that I came up with. This is a collaboration for September and at first I really really wanted to do something like fall vibes and like Halloween theme because I really like those cute and spooky type of art but because I'm gonna sell this on my shop and I don't know when my shop will be able to open again, I didn't want to do anything seasonal so I decided to go with this design because I feel like it's just things that I really enjoy drawing like flowers, plants, and cats just a little bit of like a mental wellness reminder to be kind to yourself and I feel like this would look really cute on a tote bag I even took these photos of myself with a tote bag that I already have because I wanted to edit the design onto the tote bag and see what it would look like so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it in real life because it's always so fun to see your designs come to life and please look forward to it too this collaboration will be posted in September and I will be showing you the tote bag next month hopefully still don't know when I'm gonna sell it but maybe I'll do like two or three giveaways on Instagram so we'll see another thing I got this week is a film camera and I'm so excited because I've always wanted to give film photography another try and I've been looking online to see like reviews and see what people think is the best camera for like a beginner like my Myself. and I feel like there's so many options so this week I decided to go to this film camera place near my house it's like two to three miles away so I was talking to the guy at the store and I was telling him that I'm like a hundred percent beginner like is there a point and shoot version of a film camera because I really want to give that a try like all I know is how to load film into a camera I don't really know anything about the settings he recommended two cameras there's this Canon one and a Pentax one the two of them were in my price range so I was really excited about that but when it came down to making Making the decision, I ended up going with this Pentax SBO 928 and the reason why I got this one is because it was made in 1994 which is like me, I was made in 1994 too and I was like, oh okay my decision making is really random sometimes but yeah, I'm super excited to bring this little guy with me around Boston and just shoot this and that um, little memories of my life here I'm gonna take a photo of you guys I also got a new book this week. This was recommended by my therapist actually. It's called The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, I think. It's a story about this person who dies and enters a library of like infinite books. And in each book is a story about the different lives that the main character could have lived if they had made like a different decision at this point in their life or another decision to go somewhere else in their life. And I thought that was really interesting. My therapist recommended it to me because I tend to struggle with the concept of 
time and life and why we're here and when I think about the decisions I've made and where I ended up in life I feel like I always have this what if you know what if I had done this what if I had done that would I have been hurt like that and my therapist thought that this book might put a lot of things in perspective for me so I'm really excited to check it out this week has been really really weird for me I feel like I've been spacing out a lot and having difficulty concentrating on things I actually visited the bookstore a couple of days ago because I wanted to look for this book and I couldn't focus on like the titles of the books or the author's names or anything like that like my brain was in such a fog getting out of bed was hard cooking was hard like everything just felt like so overwhelming while at the same time I felt so empty inside so I guess we're transitioning into the little mental health corner now my anxiety was really really bad this week there were three nights where I had really really horrible nightmares and in one of them I like woke up screaming and crying they were trauma based nightmares and it really messed with my head for the rest of the day because I was thinking like why do I go through all this work to love myself and heal my inner child and try to make myself feel whole again just to still have these nightmares come back and haunt me and then put me right back where I started I felt like such a sensitive person like everything I'd hear like footsteps in the hallway and suddenly feel so nervous, so anxious my boyfriend was doing the dishes and one of the plates like dropped and it made like a loud noise and that scared me so much and it just feels like every single thing around me was a trigger and it was really difficult to just exist so I would find myself dissociating and spacing out and doing whatever I could to escape reality and I feel like this need to run away is one of my biggest coping mechanisms I mean I like left my country and came all the way to the US <laughs> so you guys may have guessed that Flight is my defense mechanism. Humor is another one. Anyways, you guys might think that it's easy for me to share these things, but sometimes I get anxious for days ahead of filming day. I just want to be able to talk freely about myself and my stories without fearing that someone's going to invalidate them. I'm there on my journey, on my messy little journey of healing that isn't linear I feel like I see that quote all the time and I remind myself that all the time my therapist says that to me all the time but yeah thank you for listening as always and we're gonna cut to the rest of the vlog now bye So this is what we have so far. I don't think they look too bad. I think they're gonna be really good with the sauce. I also made these flatter ones because I want to try frying them. I think the rice sheet is gonna be super crispy, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Tell me 
22 Real Feel 37 นะคะทุกคน I did not run away from Thailand just to have to deal with this weather again Let's take a moment to thank our sponsor for today, which is Squarespace. If you guys don't already know, Squarespace is an amazing all-in-one platform for building your dream website or online storefront where you can showcase your work. I have been using Squarespace for many months now, and before then, I have never had my own website before. I barely know anything about website design, but luckily, Squarespace has made my experience super fun and super simple. They have customized checklists for opening up your own store and tons of website templates for you to choose from. Today, I wanted to show you this really cool feature of adding a protected password to one of your web pages. I remember seeing a bunch of my artist idols having this on their websites, and I've always wanted to know how to make them for myself. Thankfully, Squarespace has the option ready for me in the pages settings, so I was able to create my first secret shop for Patreons really easily. So today, you can check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your own website, you can go to squarespace.com slash madeby. By Malin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. Thank you again to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring this video and we're gonna cut back to the regular schedule program now. Need to go buy more strawberries and blueberries today. Yesterday we had to deep clean the entire house because Peter was making um, beef patties for dinner and we don't have like, what do you call it? The Thing above the stove that sucks all the smoke away. I don't know what that's called in English but we don't have that because we live in an old apartment. But yeah so the smoke got everywhere and our kitchen floors and our living room floors were all like oily and it was quite unpleasant so I decided to deep clean the entire apartment last night and I feel like I didn't do a really good job because like standing in the kitchen right now I feel like the floor is still a little oily Ugh, I hate this so much I'm gonna have to clean the house again tonight Shwap. banana blueberry chocolate protein powder and oat milk I feel like this is gonna be a good one I resent the child born later, perceiving that the younger child received the love that he or she did not get. So I just drafted this drawing right here and I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like whenever I start drawing something I'm always like, eh, about it. But um, if I leave it for a while, I start to like it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna leave this here while I go listen to an audiobook or something. But I'm gonna come back to it and refine all the lines, add some shadows, everything. But yeah. So this is the finished piece. I actually started coloring this during my therapy session. I'm the kind of person who is able to open up and communicate better when I'm sort of focused on something else because just sitting there and talking can feel a little intimidating to me. So my therapist and I do this thing where sometimes I'll be working on an art piece during the session and I'll just kind of talk as I draw or color or whatever and it's been super helpful so far. So I ended up showing this piece to my therapist and he said that my art it gives him so much hope and he said it's like filled with love and I feel like that's such a compliment I don't know I posted two drawings to Instagram today and I feel like I always do this where I post a whole bunch of art and then I disappear for like 
a week or two weeks and then I come back and I post and post and post and then I disappear again I feel like I'm not very consistent with my art because I do it depending on how I'm feeling like when I'm super happy I find that I don't second guess myself I feel more confident and I'm able to produce more art and when I'm not doing so good I feel like I have a lot of emotions to get out and that's why I'm able to draw a lot when I'm down but when I'm kind of like in between just living my day-to-day -day life normal level of anxiety normal level of numbness and depression I feel like it's very difficult to motivate myself to sit down and draw and that's probably why I have these like random periods of posting a bunch of art and then disappearing from Instagram for like a week or two and then coming back to post a bunch of art again and you know what I think that's okay I don't think it's realistic to expect an artist to post consistently or every single day because that's not how creativity works so I'm trying to tell myself that that's okay oh my god oh my god Lee liked my post <gasps> Oh, I'm fangirling so much because I love her art and I'm so excited that she saw my post. Oh my god! Culture right, date. I'm, I'm part of the culture group. <laughs> I thought I would tune in with a little voiceover so this segment doesn't feel too boring, I guess. If you don't feel like listening to me talk, you can also mute this part of the video, play some music of your own, no hard feelings at all. As I mentioned in my last vlog, I felt really inspired by some of my artist friends and wanted to give air dry clay or like sculpting a try. So shout out to Mel, Megan, and Paloma for teaching me the basics of working with clay and for inspiring me to pick up this little project. 
I actually don't have a lot of experience working with 3D art and the only time I did any type of like clay sculpture or ceramics was way back in high school. I was taking the Ceramics 101 class and one of the projects was to hand sculpt a fruit basket. And at the time I was working with polymer clay so it's slightly different from the air dry clay that I'm working in this video. I remember making the apple for the fruit basket one day. I had just added the stem and the leaves and just when I thought that it looked good enough to finally show my teacher, I picked the apple up and realized that the entire back side was flat. And since then, I feel like I've been intimidated by 3D art because I feel like I'm not cut out for it. So for this little project, I wanted to take as much time as I needed to learn the basics of air dry clay and get myself used to working with this medium. I decided to go with this cat design because I was thinking about my apple incident from high school. I think making the bottom part of the cat flat helped me feel more confident and comfortable in making this if that makes sense because I wouldn't have to worry about that bottom part and I can just focus on building up on top. One thing that surprised me about air dry clay is how dry the clay actually is and it was so light like it's not as heavy and dense as polymer clay. I read online that using hand lotion and water on the clay helps make it easier to handle so that's what I've been doing in this video. Something that I've been working on lately is how to make my art feel more loose and I think that sculpting clay is a really helpful way of letting go of perfectionism because the majority majority of the work is done by hand and there aren't many tools that I am using to help me make the piece more perfect. I've been thinking a lot about the saying don't be too precious with it and I keep that in mind whenever I make art these days because I just want to relax more and not be so hard on myself. I also remember watching one of Lee Alexson's vlogs where she says that the handmade look makes an object more beautiful and I love that so much. I think it really helped me through this journey of learning a new medium that I didn't feel comfortable with or didn't know too much about. I think it's so important to surround yourself with various mediums of art, even if it's not your main medium of choice. I've been spending a lot of time looking at interior design trends and color palettes in film because I feel very inspired by them. And although I work with digital illustrations, sometimes looking at too much of the same type of art can make me feel overwhelmed and insecure. I also feel like it's difficult to come up with an original idea when I'm scrolling non-stop through hundreds of illustrations on Instagram and so taking interest in other artistic mediums has really taught me many many things about composition, stylizing a subject, picking my colors and also the usage of art like what the purpose of this art is and as I sculpted this cat friend I suddenly had this idea to make its tail big and fluffy so that I can stack my rings on it when it's done. I I didn't get a chance to paint it yet but I'm really really excited to show you in my next video and so far I'm feeling very very happy about how this turned out. I spent around an hour and a half working on it because I wanted to take my time and I'm really happy that I did because I had a really really great time. But anyways thank you so much for listening to my little story time and thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. Summer is ending and the weather is getting a little chilly so please stay safe and take care of your health. Until next time i'm sending you lots of love and positive energy bye